those of you that are about to hop into the comments, okay, and question why I should or should not be talking about this, let me tell you. Let me tell you why. Okay, first off, the hoodie. It's a, it's a curse mark hoodie. All right, what, what more do you need? Secondly, that is literally tattooed on my body. Permanently. Permanently. Not only that, the most popular cursed character in the show is tattooed on another spot on my body. Do I have a problem? Maybe. But doesn't mean I'm pretty knowledgeable about this kind of stuff. Hmm. Let's talk about curse marks. Now for these class mod discussions, I'm gonna be doing pretty much the same thing I do for even the homebrew class mods where we're gonna scroll through it. There's gonna be chances where you can pause and read things if you wanna get a little more bit specific information, things like that. But overall, just talking about it, giving you some good ideas on how to use it, when to use it, and things of that nature. Now, funnily enough, our starting point's actually gonna be at the end of the book here where we talk about class mod considerations. Basically, the idea here is to kind of help DMs know when they should or should not use class mods. Now, I already made the video about class mods, so I kind of gave a brief idea of when and when not to use them just in an overall sense. But each of these specific ones is going to have a little bit more of a niche as to what kind of people you should or should not give them to. Because I'm not going to front, a lot of these class mods are really powerful and really, really strong and can alter a campaign heavily. So you're going to want to be careful for curse seal specific considerations and things to think about. One for a curse seal. This is not something and this is pretty much gonna go for every class mod that a player just chooses to get and just says yay smile. I slap curse seal on myself. That's not how it works. All right. If if you let your players just kind of willy nilly do this kind of thing. Let me tell you, DM's going to be getting a lot harder for you because they're going to get a lot of powers that you probably weren't ready for. Another thing to consider, it's a huge amp. Not only is it a huge amp, but this amp comes with a lot of resources and a lot of extra thinking and things to do. So if you have a character or a player rather that isn't a big fan of like thinking through turns or maybe they think too much through turns, that could also be the problem. I wouldn't give them this class mod. There's some other class mods that give you an amp while making you not work or think quite as hard for it. This one's a lot of interactions with jutsus you already have. You get a different type of chakra that you use. You have different abilities and interactions and just how everything works. So be careful about who you give this to and think about that. Another consideration, and this kind of goes for all class mods as well. Don't give it to someone who's planning on it, if that makes sense. If they're building their character specifically, around getting curse seal and then kind of just min maxing the ever living shiznit out of it, it's not going to be worth it because honestly, it's probably not going to be super fun for the other people, at least when they first get this class mod. Eventually you might give everyone a class mod as the story goes on. So then it'll be okay. But in the beginning, it could get to be really unfun for the other players because their characters are to give me min max for it. They're going to have this extra power that would already be powerful without the min maxing. So it just adds up into a bunch of nonsense. The last thing this kind of talks about, and this is more specific to the DM, don't be afraid to impose restrictions and not just book restrictions, but your own. It's a curse seal, make it do something. If you follow our campaign, you know Izuto basically gets a form of cancer whenever he uses it too much because it's a really powerful ability that he got pretty early on and had a lot of effects to go with it. So as a DM, you can kind of use those negatives as a really nice way of balancing it and kind of showing the player, hey, you can get this amp if you really, really wanna, but it's gonna cost you somewhere. So let's say that you decided, hey, I want one of my players to get a curse mark or a curse seal. How are we gonna go about that? Well, there's a few different ways to do it, whether it's someone giving it to them, they get it from some almighty power, something along those lines, right? I'm gonna be very honest and very real with you. You can follow the book and be very specific of leveling up in this very specific way, gaining it in a very specific niche way, and even following this corruption tab down to the T. I would highly recommend that you kind of create your own thing for this. Now I get it, it's more work for the DM and the DM already has a lot on their plate and a lot to do. But if you create your own variant and version of the curse seal, one, you have way more control over it, right? When it comes to the corruption and that kind of thing, some of this stuff can be kind of annoying. And sometimes it's actually the opposite where it's completely useless. Again, let's use our own campaign as an example. For Izuto, he got this curse mark from some, you know, deep, dark power that existed before and not necessarily from a bad guy like Sasuke did from Orochimaru. So something like minus two penalty to ability checks versus your curse seal patron, 
would do nothing to him. It would cause absolutely zero problems for him anytime he used it or had it. It just wouldn't matter. So instead, our DM kind of created his own variation, basically through the cancer method of kind of slowly decaying your character over time. So again, you can follow the book, but I'm going to be honest, in this part of it, with gaining it and dealing with its negatives and dealing with leveling it up, I highly recommend just going about your own way of creating your own little variations of it. And by all means, use this as a template. That'll probably make it easier. And for what you've all probably been waiting for, your class mod features. Now, first off, I want to say, if you are going to give a player this class mod, the Curse Seal, highly recommend giving it to them very early on. As it says, character level four, the earlier you give it, the better. The reason being, their character can grow with it, learn how to use it, deal with it in different ways. I would also say if you're going to give it to their character really early on in the story, don't make it super punishing in the beginning. You don't want to be diving their character into this cancer fest whenever they first start playing the campaign, right? Now, as for the class mod features, it goes in here talking about your different types of seals and stuff. At the end of the video, I'm going to go through each individual seal and the perks and bonuses of it and what it does differently than other ones. Right now, we're just going to talk about overarching features. For the first feature here, we have Cursed Power. Now, Cursed Power is basically just the overarching buff that you get. And this is also what's going to inherently cause your character change and the look change. As you can see this picture, right? This is Sasuke whenever he's just going full curse mode, gets the different skin tones, gets the different hair tones, grows, I mean, wings in his curse situation. And some will, some won't. But in general, it's basically your bonuses to your attack rolls, your damage rolls, getting higher ability scores, things of that nature. So just your overarching general character buffs. And our next feature is gonna be your curse chakra. Now, if you've looked at any of the class mods, a lot of them give you access to some type of other resource, whether that's a special type of chakra, whether that's some kind of special type of die, something in those lines. Your curse chakra is gonna be that resource. And you get a limited pool of it, it's gonna depend on your curse mark level, you'll get more and more as you go. But it gives you chakra that you can use to do curse techniques, gives you chakra that you can use to spend on regular jutsus to make them stronger using that curse mark energy, right? It's basically your bonus resource that you're gonna use for most of the things you're doing in curse mode. Now the last class mod feature is gonna be the curse seal release, which is inherently going into that curse mode, right? So for example, in Naruto, whenever Sasuke kind of goes into that curse mode and we'll talk about level one in this instance and his skin starts doing this stuff and you just see it grow across his body, that is that curse seal release of you releasing that power into your body, tapping into it, gaining that big bonus, changing your body in different ways. Again, I'm gonna talk about each seal individually at the end, but depending on the seal that you get, that's what's going to decide how your body reacts to this curse seal release. Corrupted Arts honestly might be my personal favorite part of this class mod, and what it allows you to do is take any jutsu that you usually use and attach some kind of higher, more powerful effect to that thing. So we'll just use this first one as an example, and you can kind of read through them if you'd like. Corrupted Armor. Your art has magnified your defensive prowess. When you cast this art, you gain half of the result of any dice rolled to resolve its effect, blah, 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 and gain temporary hit points equal to the following based on the result. Half the damage, full healing, twice the result of some kind of boost. So basically what you're doing is you attach the Corrupted Armor art to, let's say, a Chidori. And whenever you go to hit that Chidori and you roll it and roll your damage, you're gonna gain half that damage rolled right back to you as temporary hit points every single time you Chidori. It's so sick. So it just lets you use that curse mode to an even greater effect. And it doesn't make you alter the jutsu you were prior using. You get to use that same exact jutsu. It's just beefed up. And to scroll down, there's, you know, quite a few options here. Anything from defensive to offensive to sometimes more supporty, um, helping yourself, amping yourself, things of that nature. So tons of different options for however your character's looking. The last thing to talk about before we get into each individual seal is going to be corrupted mind, body, and soul. Again, this is going into the corruption aspect of the curse mark and to how it should negatively affect you, your body, your character, that kind of thing. Again, personally, I recommend if you are a DM and you're kind of watching this video to decide if you want to use this class mod, I recommend making this a little more custom because different campaigns are going to have different things. And like we talked about as an example in the beginning, some of them might not even have a curse seal patron. And if that's the case, a lot of these corruption effects aren't even going to matter. It's, it's not going to do anything for you. So... Be creative, make this a little funkier. Again, if you're already, you know, got the plot line going and it's easier, by all means use it. It's pretty well balanced and has a pretty good idea. But if you are going to use this version of Corrupted Mind, Body, and Soul, I would definitely ensure that your character has an actual patron, you know, for example, Orochimaru, 
something like that that has actually given them this curse because if not a lot of this corruption is just not gonna matter and they can kind of just send it through either way finally getting into each curse seal quick preface on these curse seals each of them are going to have your primary and secondary ability score when deciding what kind of seal you're going to give your pc or you know whoever your players are i would go ahead and give them the one that makes the most sense for their character for example don't give the ninjutsu user the one curse seal of heaven where the primary ability score is strength or dex it's, it's just going to feel bad because a lot of it's going to be strength amps and dex amps and they're gonna be using their intelligence, which yeah, it's the secondary, which is cool. And you'll notice a lot of them try to make the primary something and the secondary something offbeat to what the other one is. But again, try to steer them in the right direction. The other side of this too, is don't be afraid to change the flavor text of a lot of these. A lot of these already have their background lore built into them of like where they come from, where they originated, how it all started, how it's given. Don't be afraid to flavor text that. While this class mod is super well thought out and very deep, it follows the kind of normal Naruto stuff that we already know and love. So 100% feel free to alter the flavor text of how these are acquired and things of that nature. Starting off strong with our Curse Seal of Heaven, this one's really big about characters that have a thirst for power and just wanna get bigger and badder. As for your primary ability score, you're gonna either pick Strength or Dex, and then your secondary is gonna be Intelligence. For the Seal of Heaven stages, stage one, you get some bonuses to attack rolls and you can use some class features extra. So things like combo points, things like Sharingan activations, stuff like that. Stage two, you grow wings. You become faster and can fly. That's insane. And at the final stage, you basically lose some of your regular chakra and start to really seep into that curse mode and you gain some bonus curse chakra. Also, you get an entire extra action to use for Curse Arts, which extra actions are great for any class, but especially classes that love to combo things or love to do some form of, you know, combination of jutsus and attacks. Secondly, we got Seal of Earth, which is really good for characters that are very passionate about overcoming obstacles, progressing to their goals, that kind of idea. As for your primary score, you're going to pick between either Dex or Constitution, and your secondary is going to be Wisdom. Now for your stages of your Earth Seal, First one, you're going to get bonuses to your physical saving throws. Nice, makes you a little beefier. You're also going to deal a little extra damage. As for stage two, instead of growing wings this time, you're going to grow a tail, which may not sound as cool to you. But what happens is when you make a weapon attack, you for free get to make an additional attack with this tail. So you might want to give this to a player character that uses weapon attacks. Huh? Wink, wink. And as for stage three, similar to the other seals, you're gonna just fall deeper into that seal curse pit and you will get an extra action on your turn to specifically perform cursed arts. And our third option, getting us about halfway through, here's gonna be your seal of hell. This one's really good for your angy boys, all right? It, flavor text wise, derives a lot of its power from the aggression and just upsetty spaghettiness of the player character. You're gonna choose either strength or wisdom as your primary ability score and then get constitution as your secondary. For your stages of your seal of hell, at stage one, you're gonna gain some bonus AC. Always nice, always helpful. You're also gonna gain some bonus damage to any class features that also add damage. So think of something like sneak attack where you get to roll that extra XD8. You're now gonna get bonus damage on top of that sneak attack damage already. At stage two, instead of gaining a wing or tail, you get extra eyeballs. So you will get an eye on both palms of your hand and one on your forehead, giving you a huge bonus to your passive insight and also giving you some bonus to your attack rolls always helpful. And as for stage three, same as always, say it with me, you gain deeper and deeper into your curse seal pit, you lose some regular chakra, gain some curse chakra, and you get an additional action that you can use specifically for curse starts. Fourth option coming in hot, your curse seal of the sun. This guy's really good for the very ambitious characters. Now, as for the ambitious characters, it sounds good because it's not going to directly affect the personality or psyche of the person. It makes them extremely self-centered to the point of a fault, right? It's not always good. As for your primary scores, you're going to pick intelligence or constitution, and then you'll get wisdom as your secondary. Now for your stages on Seal of the Sun, stage one, you're to Seal of the Sun. You're going to start being able to use fire and lightning damage for your jutsus. Awesome, cool. And for your class and clan features that only give one use per turn, you're now going to get two. We love that. Stage two, this one's actually really unique. You basically get to put down a little thing that's gonna suck in objects and people and even jutsus towards it. If you suck in objects and people, it's gonna deal some force damage to them. If you suck in the jutsu, 
it gets rid of it. It's kind of like a free no-no card for Jutsus, which is really cool. You get very limited uses of this per rest, but something to keep in mind. And stage three, just like every single other one, you get your extra cursed art action, you gain some more cursed chakra, lose some regular chakra, the good old. Curse Seal of the Sun kind of describes itself as destroying the body. So Curse Seal of the Moon is the opposite of that, reinforcing your body, making it stronger. It even kind of describes itself as upping the creature's reaction times and things of that nature. As for your ability scores, you're picking either strength or constitution, and then you get wisdom for your secondary. As for your stages, you're gonna realize now probably that this is Izuto's curse specifically. In stage one, you get a bonus to your mental saving throws, always nice, and then it reduces the cost of concentration on jutsus, which we don't really play with as a table rule, but if you do, that would be really helpful. Stage two, again, you kind of get bigger and better, and the biggest thing is you can concentrate on an infinite amount of jutsus at a time, which is insane. And guess what stage three is? The good old extra cursed art action, extra cursed chakra, little less regular chakra, you're in there like swimwear. And for our final curse seal option, you have seal of the stars. And this one is described as something that can cure any disease and issue you have at the cause of a shortened lifespan. So this one's got kind of some built-in risk into it, which is always fun. Your primary ability score is gonna be wisdom or intelligence, and your secondary is gonna be constitution. So as for our final stages here, you're gonna realize these are pretty defensive and supportive, which I kind of respect out of a curse seal. I think that's cool. At stage one, you gain advantage on every single saving throw when it's a jutsu that has a nature release keyword. That's absolutely insane since most jutsus do, especially ones that have saving throws. On stage two, you actually get a whole new special resource, which are these seven stars that appear behind you that you can use to reduce damage by five. And at the start of all your turns, you're going to get to regenerate some of these stars as well. And at stage three, imagine that you get an extra cursed art action, you gain some cursed chakra, you lose some regular chakra, and you just cursed up out your noggin. Now, trust me when I tell you, I'm fully aware this was a much longer video than most of my other ones. And to be frank with you, a lot of these class mods probably are. They're pretty in-depth and a lot of them have tons of variations so that the class mods can be exciting and thrilling and aren't just a, a very single layered boring thing to just slap onto a character to make them stronger. So these are gonna be a little longer, but I hope you learned something. I hope you learned how to use it, what it's about, all that good stuff. If you like this and you're wanting more of the class mods, please let me know. And if you kind of like this style of it being a little longer, but a little more in-depth, also please let me know. And if you could drop a sub for the boy, all right? I saved it till the end this time because I want I want the real fans, all right? I want you real ones out there, all right? If you made it to this point, you, you a home, you a homie for real. And I meant that, all right? But nonetheless, I hope you all enjoyed and I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Peace out.